In Phuc Thuy province of South Vietnam, the Australian Army has deployed members of its elite training team to assist Vietnamese territorial forces in the defense of their villages and hamlets against the Viet Cong. These men live and work with the local forces in and around small fortified compounds which are located in or near the villages and hamlets throughout the province. These men form mobile advisory training teams. One element of the Territorial Army is the People's Self-Defense Force, or PSDF, made up of local villagers who are either too young or too old for full-time service. Although the advisers find them comparatively raw, they are keen soldiers, and with training provide a valuable measure of protection for their hamlets, as well as a good source of intelligence information. These mainly young men work in the paddy fields by day and attend military training parades at night and weekends. The Australian advisor's job is to assist the Vietnamese instructors and at the same time generally supervise their training program and techniques. Training of the PSDF is devoted mainly to basic skills such as weapon handling and shooting and a chance to fire their rifles and carbines is a big occasion for these young villagers and farmers. On the spot, expert tuition often makes all the difference in keeping the shots on target. With the bulk of the eligible male population already serving in the regular and regional forces, the People's Self-Defence Force plays an important part in the overall effort of maintaining the security of Phuc Thuy province. Although they may not look particularly soldierly, they can prove themselves to be a formidable foe for the marauding Viet Cong. After firing, the advisers take the soldiers down the range to their targets. Their scores are checked and recorded. Then the targets are patched, ready for the next group to try their skill. Not bad shooting, eh? Another element of the province force is the PF, or Popular Force. Full-time soldiers who operate in platoons of 25 to 30 men and whose main task is the local defence of villages. The Australian advisers assist in their training by first instructing the Vietnamese instructors, then supervising their training techniques. Working through interpreters, the Australians pass on their knowledge to the PF instructors. This lecture is about anti-guerrilla warfare, a very broad subject with many facets to be learned. Many of the advisers are able to teach with first-hand experience, gained in the Malaya and Borneo campaigns. In contrast with the PSDF, the training of the popular forces is more extensive, and their uniforms, weapons and equipment are more sophisticated. There are 15 mobile advisory teams working in Phuc Thuy province, each consisting of six advisors, two warrant officers and four corporals. One of the corporals is an engineer, another is a medical orderly. Many of the advisors have completed more than one tour of duty in Vietnam and have served in other parts of the country. The upgrading of the popular forces military skills is a difficult but rewarding task for these advisers of MAT-11. Near the village of Swin Mok is one of the more remote outposts of the mobile advisory teams. Its population is made up of peasant farmers and small shopkeepers, typical of many such villages scattered throughout Phuc Thuy province. Not so long ago, these villagers suffered continual sneak attacks by the Viet Cong and were forced to pay tax and supply them with food. Swin Mok is the base for MAT-8, whose advisory care extends not only to the Popular Force Platoons and People's Self-Defense Force, but also to a regional force company situated on the outskirts of the village. Compounds have to be heavily fortified with sandbagged bunkers to protect the inhabitants against enemy rocket and mortar attacks, which usually occur at night. 
Strong points are placed at each corner of the compounds and are manned 24 hours a day by RF or PF soldiers. The Browning 50 caliber machine gun is very effective against guerrilla infiltration. And these young PSDF soldiers show a keen interest in its operation and arc of fire. The mobile advisors also train the regional force in compound protection and security. In many regional force compounds, RF soldiers bring their wives and families to live on the base with them. Although in some compounds of a less permanent nature, accommodation is rather makeshift, many RF compounds comprise brick dwellings and modern facilities, paid for by the Australian government and built by army engineers. Cooking is done on a communal basis. Buns of soil and rubble provide protection around the perimeter of the compounds, but they must be of sufficient height and thickness to be effective, and Australian engineers give a helping hand. The engineer corporal advisor with Mat 8 explains what has to be done. These engineers are members of the 17th Construction Squadron from the 1st Australian Task Force, based at Nui Dart. Strong points and bunkers must be constructed in the right way and in the right positions in the compounds. Even sandbags must be laid correctly to provide sufficient strength against rocket and mortar bombardments. The advisors are all members of the Australian Army Training Team, Vietnam, which is one of Australia's most highly decorated units. Their awards include four Victoria Cross, five Military Cross, nine Military Medals, 18 Distinguished Conduct Medals, and 32 mentioned in dispatches, as well as the United States Meritorious Unit Commendation. The team has been serving in Vietnam since 1962. Patrolling is one of the more important aspects of village security. Continual sweeps through and around the villages on foot by day and night is one way of keeping the enemy away. Ambushing on suspected enemy infiltration routes is another. The VC attempt to enter the farms and hamlets at night to steal food and terrorize the farmers. Hamlet and village chiefs are marked men by the VC and many have been tortured and murdered by small raiding parties. The MAT advisers check over the details of the patrol plan with the regional force lieutenant before they leave the compound. The Viet Cong have been denied their normal means of sustenance by operational successes of the task force units and have to rely on stealing and plundering to survive. Every village has a percentage of Viet Cong sympathizers too women whose husbands and sons are members of the Viet Cong. The Vietnamese troops gain confidence by moving out to find the enemy and defeating him at his own game. The advisors have the battle experience and knowledge and the capacity to pass it on through the instructors. By example, they inspire confidence both in training and on operations. Gradually, slowly but surely, through vigilant, systematic searching under the guidance of the Australian mobile advisory teams, the Vietnamese people's self-defence, popular and regional forces are attaining a degree of real security, which, through skills and techniques learned, they will be able to maintain. The job of the members of the mobile advisors team in Phuc Thuy province can be lonely, frustrating and dangerous. But it can be highly rewarding and satisfying as they watch and see the improved performance of their charges. A key element in the Vietnamization program, the MATS are helping to make Phuc Thuy province self-sufficient and secure.